We'll go in the front row. Itartas, uh, please. Denis Dubrovin, Itartas News Agency. Uh, uh, Mr. Secretary General, uh, you have said before that uh, post Afghanistan NATO will focus on uh, uh, preparing uh, uh, its troops and uh, uh, having live uh, military exercises. Are we planning any kind of military exercises in the NATO Russia Council for the coming years and uh, in which area uh, this exercise will be held? Thank you. Uh, we have not uh, taken any decision on uh, joint military exercises uh, next year. Uh, by the way, we are right now working on our uh, work program uh, for uh, 2014. As I mentioned in my introduction, we have actually conducted a joint uh, exercise this year. Um, and uh, in, in principle, uh, uh, joint uh, exercises are uh, a possibility. Let me remind you that um, uh, in, in the document from 2002 that actually established the NATO-Russia uh, Council, it is foreseen uh, that we can conduct joint exercises within uh, the framework of the NATO-Russia uh, Council. Uh, Radio Free Europe at the back. Thank you. Rick, I just feel ready for Europe, uh, Mr. Secretary General. You were uh, recently quoted uh, in Russian media saying that Ukraine and Georgia won't join NATO. Has uh, the positions of NATO changed in this? If, if that's the quote, uh, it's not an accurate uh, quote of what I have actually said, because let me stress there is no change whatsoever in our position. Uh, when it comes to Georgia and Ukraine. And let me remind you that already in 2008, we decided that Georgia and Ukraine will become members of NATO. We decided that in 2008, and that decision still stands. They will become members of NATO, provided, of course, that they fulfill the necessary criteria and provided they wish to join our alliance. I mention the latter because, as you know, um, the current Ukrainian leadership has decided to pursue what they call a non-bloc policy. So they have decided not to pursue uh, NATO membership. That's their decision. We fully respect that. But at the same time, uh, Ukraine has decided to continue uh, its cooperation with NATO within the NATO-Ukrainian um, uh, Commission the NATO-Ukraine Commission. Uh, and um, in a recent meeting with President Yanukovych, he uh, confirmed uh, that Ukraine would even like to expand practical cooperation uh, with NATO. We appreciate that, while at the same time fully respecting that it's Ukraine's decision whether they want to pursue NATO membership or not. As regards uh, Georgia, our decision still stands. Georgia will become a member of uh, NATO, uh, provided they fulfill the necessary criteria. And I'm pleased that uh, the new government in, in Georgia has reaffirmed uh, Georgia's uh, NATO uh, aspirations. So we are working together with Georgia, within the NATO-Georgia Commission, uh, to promote the necessary reforms so that one day Georgia can hopefully fulfill the necessary criteria. I think we had uh, Europa Press over there. Um, thank you, Secretary General. Was there any d discussions with the Russian counterpart on creating a mechanism inside NATO, uh, the, uh, the bilateral council, to um, chip in the cooperation for the mission uh, uh, to eliminate uh, chemical uh, weapons in Syria? Thank you. Um, we, we haven't uh, taken uh, any decisions uh, in, in, in that regard. Uh, let me stress that um, uh, we all agree that uh, the United Nations and um, the organization OPCW uh, should be in the lead uh, of the implementation of the UN Security Council resolution to fully eliminate chemical weapons uh, in uh, Syria. So the UN and OPCW are 
and should remain in the lead. At the same time, of course, we are taking note uh, of um, uh, the UN Secretary General's call on all United Nations member states to assist uh, OPCW uh, in their demanding task. Uh, we have not received uh, any uh, formal uh, request, uh, but I would suppose that all members of the NATO Russia Council would stand ready to assist the UN and OPCW uh, if uh, requested. Uh, but in today's meeting, we haven't discussed uh, concrete uh, action. Let me stress once again, uh, we fully respect uh, that the United Nations and OPCW uh, are in the lead. Uh, one last question in the front to Reuters, please. Just to follow up then on that, I mean, would you say that there, there is an opening then, a possible opening for NATO to, to give support? I mean, you seem to not rule that out, and, and, and then even though a formal request and no formal decision has been made, you seem to be leaving it quite open that there may be a NATO role in helping either secure or destroy these chemical weapons. Thank you. Yeah, but it, it, it is premature uh, to uh, make any assessment uh, uh, of uh, a NATO or NATO-Russia counter role uh, in this. Uh, uh, we, have, we haven't received any uh, request. Um, uh, but, of course, uh, all members of the NATO-Russia Council uh, have taken note uh, of uh, the UN Secretary General's call uh, on UN member states to assist the UN and OPCW if, if needed. What I say, based on our discussion, is that I would expect uh, uh, members of the NATO-Russia Council to, to respond positively uh, if um, the United Nations actually uh, forward a request, whether that would be executed on an individual national basis or collectively, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's really premature uh, to make any assessment uh, on that at this stage. Thank you very much. That's all we have time for now, but the Secretary General will be back at 1400. Thank you.